Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. And now, the Friday Crime Report. Sunday, October 9th, 2022, Akmolji, Oklahoma. Four close friends, Mark and Billy Chastain, joined by Mike Sparks and Alex Stevens, had set off on bicycles from Billy Chastain's home at around 9 p.m. A few hours earlier, Mark Chastain's wife, Jessica, had spoken to him by phone. She had been on the road with her mother, taking a road trip to Tulsa. Jessica had said she and Mark talked about whether they needed to buy dog food for their pets. He told her they had it already, and the two said goodbye. And that was the last time that anyone would ever hear from any of those four men. Around the early morning hours of Tuesday, October the 10th, relatives of the men reported them to the police as missing and told the police that at least two of the men had been carrying cell phones. Police then began tracing the cell phones' data paths, and they were able to track their movements back to two salvage yards. The owner of the salvage yards is a man named Joe Kennedy, age 67. About the time that the police had narrowed down the final destination of the cell phone's data path, there would be a huge development in the case, though it would be one whose significance the police wouldn't figure out right away, of course. Around 2 p.m. on Friday, October the 14th, a passerby called police to report seeing something in Deep Fork River. When police arrived, they found the human remains of four individuals, their bodies dismembered. The bodies had been in the water for an extended period of time, but even so, police found evidence of gunshot wounds on the body parts. Police had not yet identified the remains of the corpses they had found. A few hours after that gruesome discovery, police went to talk to Joe Kennedy. He denied knowing any of the four men, and he appeared cooperative during questioning. But that didn't last for very long. Police claimed to have also found what they called evidence of a violent event on property near one of Kennedy's salvage yards. The evidence was blood. The next day, Joe Kennedy went missing. Police didn't call him a suspect at that time, though they did consider him a person of interest, which is what all the white media headlines about him said. And it was also about this time that it came out that the men were allegedly planning to commit some sort of crime. According to police, a witness who spoke to the police said that he had been invited to go with the four men that night, and he had been told that they would, quote, hit a lick big enough for all of them. Even the Hayseed police in Oklahoma knew what that terminology meant, though they claim they still haven't figured out what the men had allegedly been planning. On Monday, October the 17th, police in Okmulgee announced that Kennedy's PT Cruiser had been located a few miles east of town. It had been abandoned behind a business in Morris, Oklahoma. The very next morning, Joe Kennedy was stopped by police in Daytona Beach Shores, Florida. That's 1,200 miles away from Akmolji. He was found driving a stolen vehicle. The police had spotted him when one of their patrol car's onboard license plate readers alerted them that a passing vehicle was a stolen car from Oklahoma. The Daytona Beach Shores police stopped the car, and Kennedy was arrested for grand theft of a motor vehicle after police confirmed his identity and criminal status, and the police in Okmulgee were alerted that he was in their custody. On a side note, this case demonstrates something that a lot of black folks have known for years. The cops in Florida are able to use their license plate readers to see information not only on Florida license plates, but on license plates from anywhere in the country. And this wasn't even a major police department. This wasn't Miami or something. This was Daytona Beach Shores, some beach bum nowhere town in Florida. So you can imagine what the bigger police departments have at their disposal. At the very least, they've certainly got the same technology as Daytona Beach Shores. And license plate readers is only one of a number of digital surveillance tools that police and cities have that read license plates and track people on the streets. Remember the Jussie Smollett case? How do you think they found those two Nigerians so fast? My point is, when the police try to act like they just can't figure out who's carrying out certain crimes, especially drive-by shootings where they never seem to be able to find a suspect, they're lying. Anyway, and you won't be surprised to learn that this isn't the first time Joe Kennedy's been in trouble with the law. He's also a twice-convicted felon. 
A shooting victim is coming forward now that this man who shot him 10 years ago is back in the public eye. Robert Skinner shows me where he was shot 10 years ago. And then where did it, the bullet come out? Right here. He says back in 2012, he pulled into this salvage yard in South Oak Mulgee to turn his car around when Joe Kennedy, the salvage yard owner, pulled up behind him. He pulled a gun out and I stepped behind my ex-wife and he shot me. And I said, freak, I'm shot, run. Joe Kennedy was charged with assault and battery with a dangerous weapon and obstructing an officer for the shooting. An affidavit in the case says Kennedy lied to police about vital details of the shooting. Skinner was also charged with second degree burglary. They found me guilty of uh, burglary and they stuck me on probation, even though OSBI proved that I was not even on his property when I got shot. Did you get all that? In 2013, he pleaded no contest to felony assault and battery with a dangerous weapon and misdemeanor obstructing a police officer. He's supposed to be serving a 10-year sentence for that, but you guessed it, he's got genetic immunity from law, so instead of a prison cell, he got a deferred sentence. And before that crime, he had also been charged in 1998 with attempting to receive stolen property. So in other words, Joe Kennedy is a model citizen under white supremacy. Prosecutors in Oklahoma filed papers saying that Joe Kennedy going fugitive constituted a breach of his plea deal, so he should be sentenced for his 2012 crimes. As of this recording, though, it's unknown whether he's been extradited back to Oklahoma yet. By the way, that assault and battery case Kennedy caught, he claimed he caught six people who broke into his salvage yard. Now, when you hear that, you probably wonder if this incident had anything to do with the prior one. Because there was that witness who police say told them that the four men had claimed that they were going to hit a lick. Did it have anything perhaps to do with Kennedy's salvage yard? We don't know. Perhaps in time, Kennedy might be able to shed some light on this incident and explain whether or not this was some sort of burglary gone wrong. Because it wouldn't be the first time he's been involved in something like that. But I think it bears noting that the four men who Kennedy is accused of killing are being treated as simply victims and nothing else by the white media. There's no attempts being made to dirty them up as they do with black victims of crime who are gunned down in the streets. And another thing that you won't be hearing in this case is the phrase mass murder. Because whoever committed this crime, that's what this is, a mass murder. Four people killed all at once. Their remains dismembered and dumped in the river. At the very least, the headline should be saying suspected mass murderer is caught. It should be remembered that this was four people who were killed, not four people shot or four people wounded like the white media loves to make a big deal out of, especially the right white media talking about Chicago or somewhere. This was four people killed. Have you heard about this story in the white media? You should have. It should have been everywhere. It happened just a couple of weeks ago. It ought to be nationwide news. Instead, the big story of the day is Kanye West. So to the white media, a bipolar black man's rantings matter more than four dead people whose alleged killer nearly got away. Nice to know. But in a way, it makes perfect sense that the white media buried this story. Seems to be some sort of professional courtesy at work. And what do I mean by that? Well, from where I stand, the accused quadruple murderer and the white media both work in the same business. Selling garbage. And that's this week's Friday Crime Report. Keep your eyes open and stay on alert, because there's a lot worse criminals out there than the ones the white corporate media chooses to show you. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Ginger Vine, Endoro Emblem, Nigel Davis, Maurice Soule, and Moshe Ben Abraham. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.